Hi, I'm Michael Courier, and this is Psych Exam Review. In this video, I'm going to teach you a quick trick to estimate heritability if all you know are the same sex concordance rates for monozygotic and dizygotic twins. Now, if you're a bit unclear on the concept of heritability, I've put a link in the video description where you can learn more. So, in order to make this quick estimation, all you need to do is take the dizygotic concordance rate and subtract it from the monozygotic concordance rate, and then multiply this answer by 2. This will give you an estimated heritability, and it's what's known as Falconer's formula, after the Scottish geneticist Douglas Falconer. Next, we'll look through the sort of conceptual logic of what we're doing here. We'll look at a couple real-life examples from research, and then finally we'll talk about a caveat of this estimation. To think about what we're doing conceptually, we can consider cases where genes don't matter at all, or where genes are all that matters. So we could start by saying, well, if genes don't matter for this trait, then we wouldn't see a difference between the concordance rates in monozygotic and dizygotic twins, because sharing more genes doesn't make you share the trait more, because the trait's not related to genes. So if we had a concordance rate of 0.3 for monozygotic twins and 0.3 for dizygotic twins, then we would subtract and get 0 times 2 would still be 0, and this would tell us that the estimated heritability is 0. Genes don't matter for this trait. On the other hand, we could imagine a case where genes really matter. We would expect monozygotic twins would have a concordance rate close to 1, because they share all their genes, and genes matter for this trait. And dizygotic twins would have a concordance rate closer to 0.5, because they only share 50% of their genes. And so 1 minus 0.5 would give us 0.5 times 2 would give us an estimated heritability of 1, meaning genes are really all that matters for this particular trait. Now, of course, these are extreme examples, and we won't really see this in real life. So let's look at some actual research and see how we can practice using Falconer's formula to get an estimated heritability. First, we could look at Kenneth Kendler et al.'s 2006 study on Swedish twins and liability of lifetime major depression. And in this study, they found a concordance rate for monozygotic women of 0.44 and for dizygotic women of 0.16. And for men, they found a monozygotic concordance rate of 0.31 and a dizygotic concordance rate of 0.11. So we can run these through our Falconer's formula, and what we see is this gives us an estimated heritability for women of 0.56 and for men of 0.4. For another example, we could look at Albert Stunkert et al.'s 1990 study on twins and body mass index, and they found for monozygotic women a concordance rate of 0.66 and for dizygotic women, a concordance rate of 0.27. And for monozygotic men, they found a concordance of 0.74. And for dizygotic men, 0.33. So again, we can run these through Falconer's formula. And what we see is this gives us an estimated heritability for women of 0.78 and for men of 0.82. In all of these cases, this is just a rough estimate of what's known as broad sense heritability because it includes all genetic effects. And this calculation tends to overestimate heritability, and this is due to some differences in additive and non-additive genetic effects between monozygotic and dizygotic twins. So more complex model fitting is needed in order to get a better sense of the actual heritability. And if we look to Kendler, they estimated the heritability for lifetime depression in women was around 0.42, and in men it was around 0.29. And in Stunkard, they estimated a heritability for body mass index of 0.7 in men and 0.66 in women. We should also remember that heritability can vary in different populations. It also can vary with age. Somewhat counterintuitively, it tends to rise for many traits as we age. Nevertheless, Falconer's formula gives us a quick and easy way to estimate heritability in our head if all we have are the concordance rates. But we want to keep in mind that this is likely an overestimate of the role of genes on that trait. Hope you found this helpful. If so, please like the video, subscribe to the channel for more, and don't forget to check out the hundreds of other psychology tutorials that I have on the channel. Thanks for watching.